The first segment of the Hot 7 Nightly News is brought to you by Flo. Leading the way in election coverage. Hot 7 TV. Election Central. Tonight, the DPP says there is no basis for charges in five of the alleged extrajudicial killings, while seven require further investigation. A Camille Henry student is the island's top performer at the common entrance examination. And the deputy leader of the National Green Party says do not expect the party to follow the lead of the SLP and UWP by releasing a party manifesto. The details of these stories and more coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Joseph. Good night. It is Wednesday, the 21st of July, 2021. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. Following review of investigation into alleged extrajudicial killings, the island's director of public prosecutions has disclosed that in relation to the shooting deaths of Jason Warrican, Kimran Simon, Ashley Bernard, Bertram Charles, and Elisha Slui, he has advised the commissioner of police that there is not sufficient evidence at this stage for any charges to be preferred against the officers concerned in these shootings. As it relates to the deaths of Reginald Jean, Dwight Henry, Kevin Ferdinand, Rosarius Markey, John Baptiste McFarlane, Michelle Cadet, and Alan Louisi, the Commissioner of Police has been advised by the DPP that there are further lines of inquiry to be explored. Therefore, the investigations in these matters are active. More in this report. In 2010 and 2011, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force undertook an initiative called Operation Restore Confidence, which was aimed at dealing with the significant uptake in crime at that time. During this, 12 police shootings took place, a feat which attracted much attention both on a local and international front. The shootings were deemed extrajudicial and resulted in sanctions being placed on the force by the U.S. On Wednesday, Director of Public Prosecution, Dashtarin Green, announced that there is insufficient evidence to prosecute officers implicated in the killing of five civilians. For obvious reasons, I cannot make public the contents of these files, and I shall advise you of my position as it relates to these investigations to date. In relation to the shooting deaths of Jason Warrican, Kimron Simon, Ashley Bernard, Bertram Charles, and Elisha Louis. I have advised the Commissioner of Police that I do not find that there is sufficient evidence at this stage for any charges to be preferred against the officers concerned in these shootings. As it relates to the deaths of Reginald Je, Dwight Henry, Kevin Ferdinand, Rosarius Markey, John Baptist McFarlane, Michelle Cadet, and Alan Louisi, I have advised the Commissioner of Police that I find that there are further lines of in inquiry to be explored, therefore, the investigations in these matters are active and I intend to provide a follow-up update on these matters in due course. Green explained why it has taken so long to bring some measure of resolve to this matter. My office does not conduct criminal investigations. The conduct of these investigations are within the remit of the Commission of Police and the Royal St. Lucia, Royal St. Lucia Police Force by extension. The function of my office as the Director of Public Prosecutions, is to review these investigations submitted by law enforcement. My office therefore provides advice and guidance to the police investigators, which include advice on the sufficiency of evidence gathered and any possible lines of inquiry to be explored. We would also provide advice on the evidential requirements of an investigation. The decision to prosecute anyone is determined by a great extent or to a great extent by the evidence gathered by investigators being sufficient to provide a realistic prospect of conviction. This would include, for example, evidence of an eyewitness who saw a crime occurring. The DPP brings clarity to the issue of the much talked about impacts investigation. I am in receipt of a report and I have thoroughly reviewed this report. I want to state reference to this report that CARICOM impacts did not prepare this report and so it is actually incorrect to refer to it as the impacts report. This investigating team was empowered as aforesaid by the Police Complaints Act as amended that I am not in receipt of any material from the Jamaican Constabulary Force. Therefore, 
The final report provided by the Jamaican team does not amount to evidence or relevant material compiled in a criminal investigation that I am able to act upon. It, however, provided possible lines of inquiry and opinions, all of which I believe should remain under seal to eliminate any possibility of unfair prejudice to anyone concerned. Consequently, there was an appointment of local investigators to conduct a review of the report provided by the Jamaican team and also to conduct homicide investigations into the matters under review. Green says due to the nature of the investigations and to the fact that external agencies are assisting in the investigations, he has to continuously conduct reviews of the evidence gathered thus far and offer advice where necessary. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzalez. Today, Wednesday, the 21st of July, the Ministry of Health and Wellness received confirmation of 12 new cases of COVID-19 from a batch of 226 samples. The contact tracing for these individuals is underway. Confirmation was also received of the recovery of nine individuals, bringing the total number of active cases to 100. Presently, all of the active cases are doing well. The new cases bring the total number of cases diagnosed in country to date to 5,496. Zante Edward of the Camille Henry Primary School attained the top score in the common entrance exam. Edward scored 96.44 in this year's exam, which only featured multiple choice questions. Three of her fellow schoolmates round off the top five students, meaning Camille Henry has four students in the top five spots. Jante Edward met every challenge of navigating school during the COVID-19 pandemic. To get to a moment of profound personal achievement on Wednesday, she is the 2021 top performer at Common Entrance Examination. Edward attained a grade of 96.44 in this year's exam, which comprised of only multiple choice questions. That in itself is a feat. Edward says that the hard work has paid off and she is unable to fathom her achievement. I feel very excited. Um, I cannot believe it, like I was very shocked. So do you feel like all your hard work paid off now? Yeah. So tell us how was it preparing for common entrance since it was different than any multiple choice say, How much work did you have to do? A lot of work day and night. I had to go to bed extremely late and I, and I had to wake up early. It was very hard. So but then I push through. Do you feel like that's all worth it now? Yeah. While Edward is the top performer, the school, Camille Henry, clenched the top four spots and rounded up five students in the top ten. Undoubtedly, this is a surreal achievement. Principal of Camille Henry, Beverly Diodoni, says that teamwork is the winning recipe and it is embodied at the school. It really proves that teamwork really does get the job done. The teachers, the parents, our PTA, we really work together and we encourage the students. The students, they are here. One thing about Camille Henry students, they take our cue, they take our lead, they pay attention, and they go with what we advise them to do. And they've worked really hard and they have really excelled. So we are really, really proud of them. Edward will attend her school of first choice, St. Joseph's Convent, come September. She says her future career goal is to become a forensic scientist. For the Hot 7 Nightly News, I am Karim Nelson. Thank you, Karim. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. Still to come, Paho laments continued low vaccination rates in the region. Rosella King speaks on her own relationships with wives within the United Workers' Party following her husband's departure. And Raquel Dubolet Chastley on her experience as the wife of the Prime Minister. That and more after the break. The first segment of the Hot 7 Nightly News was brought to you by Flow.